Welcome to the third video in this Synchronous Teaching Educator video series. In the last video, we covered the following. In this video, we will cover the importance of online interactivity with a focus on screen sharing, annotation, and whiteboard tools. Interactivity is especially important in an online environment. Although learners may initially prefer to engage in passive learning due to fear of technology, active learning techniques have been shown to increase knowledge, critical thinking, and ultimately learner satisfaction. Consider the simple act of getting learners to write down an answer rather than telling them. By having learners commit to an answer, it causes reflection on their reasoning and personal connection to the material, leading to better retention and practical application of learning. However, Incorporating interactivity can be even more challenging online with potential technical glitches and more challenging group dynamics. Conversely, interacting online can also help with issues of group development and comfort in online learning. So how do we create interactivity in an online synchronous environment? There are countless ways, but in this module, we'll focus on annotation and whiteboard through screen sharing. Zoom allows you to share any program you have open, such as a website or PDF document, or share your entire screen that might have multiple apps open. You can also screen share from your iPhone or share a whiteboard, which we'll discuss shortly. Annotation allows you to draw on whatever you are screen sharing. I'm going to share a PowerPoint slide. Then, as host, you can open your annotation bar from your control bar. You'll need to direct your learners to open their annotation bar from the Options tab at the top of their screen. Once selected, the annotation bar allows learners to draw, type, stamp, in multiple colors and sizes. If your participants are on an iPhone or tablet, this feature is under the Pen Pencil icon. Take a minute to reflect on how you might use this tool to promote interactivity in your teaching. Here's some examples. You can annotate anatomy slides, such as this circle of Willis. Try an icebreaker exercise, such as putting your name in your favorite part of Toronto. Lastly, annotation is great for commitment to change, such as this example. Really, the possibilities are endless. One of the disadvantages of annotation, compared to whiteboard, is that the images will persist to the next slide unless you go into the annotation bar and hit Clear All. So let's clear all drawings before we move on. Next, we're going to review the whiteboard feature. Click New Share and choose Whiteboard. Now your learners can draw using the same annotation bar that they did before. One of the disadvantages in Zoom is that your whiteboards can't be set up in advance, such as dividers, titles, and instructions. Consider posting the question in the chat to have the learners reflect on it while you're setting up the whiteboard or have your co-facilitator assist with the setup. Try open-ended questions such as brainstorming diagnoses or treatment options. You can also freehand draw, but consider using a touch screen or digital pen for best results. Here, I'm using it to show how you can draw a simple number cancellation to test for left neglect. Both whiteboards and annotation can be used for interactive learning methods. For example, competition between learner groups, brainstorming and peer-to-peer -peer scaffolding of ideas, needs assessment, icebreakers, quizzing such as labeling, fill in the blank, or numbering steps, commitment to change, debating a case or concept by dividing possible options into quadrants, drawing complicated concepts, or highlighting certain concepts in your presentation. Also, consider saving your whiteboard or annotation for future reference and guide your learners to write in all areas of the screen, perhaps by dividing up the page if you have more than 20 learners. For now, take this time to Number 1. Reflect on what you've learned in this video and commit to how you'll use interactivity in your teaching. Number 2. Consider effective teaching principles. Acknowledge to yourself and sometimes your participants that although interactivity can initially be uncomfortable and time-consuming, it's worth the investment in learning outcomes. Decide on what interactive learning methods, such as debating a case or competing in teams, you'll use in your teaching and adjust your content to accommodate this. Number three, try out features of Zoom. Ensure whiteboard and annotation features are enabled in your settings. Use your two computer setup to try out each of these features. Consider how you will creatively maximize your screen real estate with larger groups of learners, such as dividing up the screen or having learners participate at different times. Stay tuned for our next video number four on feedback with a focus on chat, participant pod, and poll features.